Hi and welcome in the Airflow 2.0 series where you will learn the new features of Airflow 2.0. My name is Marc Lomarty, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer and I'm thrilled to show you a new feature of Airflow 2.0. Before getting started, I have some questions for you. Have you ever tried to use the experimental API in Airflow? Have you ever tried to manipulate the resources of your Airflow instance using the experimental API? If so, you know what I'm talking about and how limited is the experimental API. Let me give you a quick reminder about it. For a very long time, actually until Airflow 2.0, the API of Airflow was experimental. That means you are not supposed to use it in production as the API can change and also only a few endpoints are available. For example, you can't interact with XCOMs, neither variables, and even with diagrams, it is really limited. Obviously, there are no CRUD operations. For example, if you want to create, read, update, and delete a variable, you can do that. The API doesn't follow any specification, neither has a structure, which is a real issue if you want to interact with that API in a production environment where you have multiple tools. And finally, there is a big lack of documentation. Indeed, you can't even know output format of some endpoints, whether it will be a JSON or a text format. As you can see, the experimental API is definitely not suitable for usage in production. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce to you the new API in Airflow 2.0, which is the Stable REST API. The Stable REST API provides a layer of abstraction using an industry standard interface, which is Open API 3 in that case. That means all of the endpoints follow the same structure, and so no more either JSON or text outputs with different structures. Another very important improvement is that most of the endpoints support CRUD operations. For example, with connections, you can create, read, delete, or update connections. Also, now the Stable REST API is well documented, as you are going to see in a minute, and you have the possibility to fully interact with the resources of Airflow without using the CLI or the user interface. And that means you can create applications on top of Airflow. All right, now we have discovered the advantages of the new Stable REST API, let's discover it in practice. And the first thing I would like to show you is the documentation, as it has changed a lot. This is the documentation of the experimental REST API. As you can see, only a few endpoints are available, and if you take a look at the description of those endpoints, for example, let's take this one, experimental pools, you don't even know what will be the structure of the output, neither the fields that you will be able to access from it. Now, if you take a look at the new documentation of the REST API, as you can see, it is a new world. You get an overview of it in order to get started with the stable REST API in the best conditions. But more importantly, on the left panel, you can see all the resources that you can interact with. For example, if you want to interact with the connections, click right there and you get all the endpoints related to the connections. You can list the connections, create a connection, update a connection, and so on. If you take a look on the right panel, you can see the output you will get for each endpoint. All right, time to move to the practice. If you want to follow what I'm going to show you, you just need to click on the link in the description below and you will end up on the following page. From there, under the section demo, you can see all the instructions we are going to execute. First, I'm assuming that you already have installed the Astronomer CLI, and if you are wondering why I'm using the Astronomer CLI, well, it is the easiest and fastest way to set up and run Airflow locally. So if you want to install it on your computer, you just need to copy that command, and if you are on Windows, you just need to follow that link. Once you have installed the Astronomer CLI, the first thing you need to do is to create a new folder, Airflow-2 in our case. Then go into that folder and type astro d or dev in it in order to initialize the local environment. Then let's open the code editor in that folder and open the file docker file as right there we want to use the latest docker image of Airflow corresponding to Airflow 2.0. To do this, go back to the page and copy the following line then paste it right there, like that, and save the file. 
Next, we need to change the authentication backend used by the API. I won't go into the details here, but there are multiple ways of authenticate your users with the API. In our case, go back to the page and copy the following line in order to use the basic authentication. So open the file .env right there and paste that line. Save the file and we are ready to start Airflow. To do this, in your terminal, type astro d for dev start. Enter and wait until all the containers corresponding to Airflow, the Postgres instance, the scheduler and the web server are up and running. You can verify this by typing astro d ps. And now if you go to your web browser and open a new page, then type localhost colon 8080. As you can see, we land on the authentication page of Airflow 2.0. If you type admin admin, we land on the DAX view. Now Airflow 2.0 is up and running, we can check if the API works. To do this, go back to the page and copy the following command in order to list the variables that are stored in the Airflow instance. Go to your terminal, then paste the command and hit enter. As you can see right there, we obtain an output in JSON and we don't have any variable yet. Let's create a variable. So back to the DAX view, click on admin variables, then add a new record. Let's call it test, then value, click on save, go back to your terminal and execute the same command again. As you can see, right now we have one variable corresponding to the variable that we have just created. All right, the API works. Now the question is, what can we build on top of it? As you know, we use many variables in Airflow. And at this point, there is no way to know where these variables are used, except by looking into the code of each DAG, which is a very tedious and time consuming task. So what about if we create a tool on top of the REST API in order to list and create variables, then attach DAGs to those variables so that we know where they are used. Well, I've created the web application corresponding to that tool. And to fetch the code, you only need to go back to the page right there and copy the following command to clone the repository. So back to your terminal, paste the command, and once it's done, go into the folder airflow-2-demo-api, then airflow-variable-manager, then execute the command npm install. Obviously, you will need to install the tool npm. Now it's done to run the web application, you just need to type npm start, then open a new tab and type localhost colon 3000. And as you can see, we land on the Airflow Variable Manager. Let's create a new variable. So here, if we type my underscore var, then my underscore value, and let's say that variable will be used in the DAG my underscore DAG. If we click on create, as you can see, I have a new variable my underscore var with the value my underscore value used in the DAG, my underscore DAG. And if you are wondering where this list comes from, well, if you go back to the Airflow user interface and refresh the page, as you can see, we have the variable my underscore var and my underscore value created from the Airflow variable manager. If you click on delete, the variable has been deleted. And if you refresh the page, you can see that effectively the variable has been deleted as well. All right, in this video, we have discovered why you should definitely not use the experimental API anymore and why the new REST API in Airflow 2.0 is so useful. Also, we have seen a concrete application, which is the Airflow Variable Manager, in order to attach DAGs with the variables that you create in your Airflow instance so that you won't have to take a look into the code of each DAG to know that information. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you are ready, see you for the next feature.